In this part of the lesson, we'll introduce you to the first debugging technique referred to as stepping through code. This allows you to run a subroutine line by line at your own pace, so that you can check that everything you think should be happening actually is. I've started by downloading the file from the link on the page, so I'm going to open this up now by double clicking, and if necessary, I can click the enable content button to allow my code to run. I can then switch to the developer tab and click the visual basic button to launch the visual basic editor, and this is the code that we're going to step through. Before we begin stepping through a procedure, it can be useful to display an extra toolbar called the debug toolbar. One simple way to display this is to right click at the top of the screen where all the existing menus and toolbars are, and then choose to view the debug toolbar. When this appears, by default it will be floating over the rest of the VBA window, so you can click and drag to move this and perhaps nest it at the top of the screen with all the other toolbars. And there are several buttons on here that we're going to use to step through and debug our procedure. To begin stepping through a procedure, the first thing I need to do is select something within it. So I can click anywhere between sub and end sub, it doesn't really matter. At that point, I've got several choices. I can either press the F8 key, or I can click on this button on the toolbar that we've just displayed called Step Into, or I can go to the debug menu and choose the Step Into option in there, and that's what I'm going to choose right now. As soon as I do that, the first line of the subroutine will be highlighted in yellow, assuming there are no syntax errors or compile errors anywhere in it. What I can do from this point is, again, either press F8 or click on the Step Into button or use the Debug menu and choose the Step Into option in here to execute the line that's currently highlighted in yellow. So this time I'm going to press the F8 key and that begins the subroutine and moves to the next instruction. Now nothing's actually happened yet, we've simply begun the subroutine, I haven't actually executed the instruction that will add the new worksheet. Before I do that, it can be helpful to see both the Excel window and the VB Editor window at the same time. So what I'm going to do is hover the mouse over the title bar of the VB Editor window and drag it across to the right hand side of my screen. Now as soon as my mouse cursor touches the right hand side of the screen, it will snap to and fill up the right hand side of my screen. I can then choose to view the Excel window on the left hand side of the screen so that as I continue stepping through the procedure, I'll be able to see the changes happen in Excel. Now if I make sure that I've got the VB Editor window active, I can continue either pressing the F8 key or clicking this button on the toolbar to continue stepping through the procedure. So if I press the F8 key one more time, you should be able to see that in Excel, I've now created a new worksheet. I've also moved to the next instruction in, in the procedure, and if I press F8 again, that instruction will be carried out, and you can see that that change has taken place in the Excel window. If at any point I get bored of stepping through a procedure, I can run it all the way to the end at any stage by either pressing the F5 key or clicking the green triangle button, the continue button on either the standard toolbar, or now I've also got an extra one on my debug toolbar as well. Or of course the run menu has the continue option at the top as well. I could also choose just to stop running the procedure at any point at the point it currently sits by either pressing the reset button here or on the debug toolbar, or again in the run menu I can choose reset. I can also choose not to run the lines of code in the sequence they're written. I can change the active instruction at any point by clicking and dragging the yellow arrow on the left hand side of the, uh, the code window. So if I drag the yellow arrow downwards and release it when it's next to any line of code, it will change that instruction to be the active one. So that if I did press the, uh, the F8 key at this point, that's the instruction that will be carried out. This allows you also to go back to a previous instruction and make changes to the code and run it again. So for example, if I wanted to modify the name that gets assigned to cell A1, I can drag the instruction or drag the yellow arrow back to this instruction. I can then alter the code on that line. So let's put in a, a full company name, Wise Owl Training, rather than just Wise Owl. And then if I press the F8 key again, or indeed click on the Step Into button one more time, I'll see that that instruction gets carried out again. So at this point, I can continue stepping through the procedure either by clicking the Step Into button or pressing the F8 key. And each time I do that, each instruction gets carried out step by step at the pace I want. So I can check that everything I expect to happen actually does happen the way I intended. When I reach the end sub statement, it's important to either execute that statement or make sure that you have reset or stopped running the procedure. If I try to do certain other things, such as create a new subroutine, I'll be warned that I can't do that while my code is in what's called break mode. So as you're stepping through a procedure, your code is in a, a mode called break mode. So it's important either to press F8 when the end subline is highlighted, or just stop running the procedure by clicking the reset button. I'm going to press F8 to end my subroutine. <laughs> 